Um, actually, I started, you know, DJing. Well, not as a major DJ. You know, the DJ is like the DJ. In my name is not really like the DJ. DJ. You know, it's it's um, it's like a nickname. You know, back in secondary school when I, you know, would always make music. Oh, on a keyboard, you know, so, and I did a little bit of that till I found out that the, the kind of songs that were my playlist at the time were not songs that I enjoy, you know, and then I realized that um, as a musician, I love, you know, good music and that brought me into music production to really, I found out, I found that as a, um, as a missing piece in, in, in the music industry. So that was why I decided to major in music production. Uh, I started way back as far as uh, 2013, but then I started like as early as when I was finishing my secondary school, like 2006, seven, and um, it was pretty much interesting because I was just doing it as as a side piece, like just because I love making beats at the time. So, but I decided to take it to you know the next level where I found out you know that um, there was a lot of there was a lot of problem with the quality of music that was coming out at the time and then uh, though there were professionals that I was looking up to you know that I listened to at the time and then I found out that there was something I could bring to the table you know and uh, it was it was pretty much smooth flow and uh, I thought about you know the the guys at the project fame at the time you know, because I knew if I couldn't have access to the person who carried first, I could have access to the person who took seventh and eighth or twelfth and build, build off with that, you know, and it was pretty much a very great uh, blueprint, which by God's grace worked. There were a lot of songs at the time, but one of the one of the songs that really got people's attention was uh, Le Kwauku by Inyanya. And then uh, I think that was what uh, G World White's label boss at the time, or G World White's label boss, which is um, Emperor Jizi, heard and said, because he told me how he got to you know work with me. And he said, it's because I heard this song and something made me feel like I can work with you. And I'm like, Let's do it. So he actually heard Le Kwauku and said, I'm going to work with his artist at the time, Kistania, and that's how we made it with you. I, I just had one thing in mind, and that was, you know, keeping the relationship nice and, you know, giving good product, making sure that I can be called for the same work tomorrow and as many times as possible and protecting the integrity. You know, all, all this was what was on my mind because I realized that the only way, you know, I can have people come back and work with me is when I do very well. So, and uh, I stuck with that and you know, I keep sticking with that. Okay, so uh, February 10th, I put out a video for a new single and I have a prominent songwriter I've always worked with. Uh, his name is Clem. You know, we've worked on a series of projects from way back as far as 2014, from um, Ferrari by Yemi Alade, you know, to um, um, even Lenge Lenge, a part of ranking. And uh, many, many, many projects like that. There's so many songs I can barely keep, like, I can barely remember. So we just put out a project and it's titled Holla Me. And uh, we just put out video as well. Yeah. What else do 
should I like to work with? I mean, I'll continue working with myself <laughs> because to be sincere, there's one thing I understand that um, you can only keep putting out better materials and other people would feel like they want to work with you. You know, I realized that um, not to be proud, you know, not to sound proud, um, you can only focus on your own type of sound such that when other people feel like, okay, this is the kind of sound I need for my project, then they can come. Because the moment you force your sound on other people, it's going to look like you're doing too much. So you just want to keep focusing on your own specific sound and brand type of music. And if they feel like they need that kind of project on the, or that kind of sound for their own project, then I mean, I'm welcome to work with anybody. Yeah, um, Follow Me was initially written for an international artist and then um, at the time, um, if I, maybe I just break it through here, we had a project with Sean Kingston as far back as um, 2019, earlier, earlier, that's early 2019, that's yes, January or thereabout. So, and those are one of the songs that we you know, sent out earlier, which they liked, but then they realized that at the time, you know, they had um, the Davidos fall, you know, and realized that oh, that's what the label is looking for. And we were like, okay, if that's what they're looking for, then most probably we can put this out ourselves because, I mean, I, I enjoyed the record. I felt like, those are, those are one of the records I felt, man, I could put out, you know, with, you know, by ourselves. Do I become selective? Uh, I think, um, I mean, it, it has to take two when when this selection is happening because what what I may want may not be what the other person wants. Um, maybe the other person wants something different from what they expect that I'm going to give them. So if they're coming to say, okay, Kubo and I want to work with you, is because I'm supposed to give them something different from what they've been doing before. So I, I, I don't really have that factor at a very high, you know, uh, at a very high place. I mean, I'm flexible for short. Um, I would say Tenny has given me, at least for current projects that I've done so far, all of them actually do, but um, the difference with what she, what, what she does is she just gives me color, you know. I'm not trying to overhype her and then someone like uh, Fioki as well and someone like Clem, you know, these are people that I know that you know they they have their own branding and art from a different place. Like they don't get distracted by whatever is out there. They still bring their own genuine sound. So, I mean, these are cats that has made it easy for the creative process. So yes. Uh, I used to, I used to, but now I, I do it like a collaboration because in the end I realized that if if we're both coming on a project together, it has to be like co fully collaborative. There's no, oh, we want to pay you off or we want to pay, no, it's, I think that's where um, being selective comes in, but at the time, I always like to make it collaborative. I want it to be like, okay, we are both going to make it on this project. And if anything happens to the project, it's still my responsibility. You know, that's that's how I like to do it now. Projects like that, I think I, I went into an agreement with the company and I may not be able to disclose that now, but uh, they happen to have um, 
uh, made business easy for me at the time and you know really fought for me in places that I would never have done myself. So and then um, working on New Era with Case was a family thing and most definitely I still get defended till today on those projects so I feel covered. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. For more entertaining video content such as behind the scenes of music videos and movies, music concerts, premieres, interviews and exclusive gists, subscribe now to our YouTube channel Goldmine TV and be unleashed into a world of super excitement.